We're going to take a look at the bag here. Uh, this is the camera bag. On top you'll find the ATEM Mini. And on the left compartment this is the ATEM Mini power supply. There's a one foot HDMI cable uh, for the projector laptop to the uh, HDMI switch, not not the ATEM, but another HDMI switch. This is a USB-C to USB uh, 3.0. The ATEM Mini supports down to, is backwards compatible to USB 2.0, but um, this is um, the uh, USB-C to USB, up to USB 3.0. There are two camcorders, but we'll just be using as, them as cameras. They have two different mounting plates. Uh, this one, the quick release plate 30, is for the bigger tripod, and the other one is for the smaller tripod. So put those back in there. Up here, you have the power supplies for the for the camcorders and then down here there's a variety of different cables this is a TRS 3.5 millimeter attenuator cable um, in case the signal from the mixer is too hot into the ATEM Mini and then the rest in here are just HDMI Mini to full size HDMI and you'll notice there's a bunch of 90, these are like 90 degree HDMI mini to female HDMI and then these are just HDMI mini straight to HDMI, full size HDMI. And so what happened was, I didn't realize this until I got everything, but on one of the tripods, so this is the smaller one, um, these 90 degree connectors fit perfect onto the camcorder and on the other tripod, on the other tripod slash um, quick release plate, these do not fit as well. So it's actually, it fits fine next to the plate, but once you mount it on the tripod, it won't fit. So that's why you have to use these straight end connectors. And there's a bit of Velcro on these, that way you can attach it to the attach it to the tripod leg um, for strain relief. That way it doesn't pull too hard. You don't need the batteries on these, um, but I kept them in to retain the settings. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it with the bag. On the right side is the HDMI um, switcher. So what this does is you plug in the where did that go like the one foot HDMI cable into the laptop running slides, and then the two one goes to the projector and one goes to the switcher on the HDMI input number four. And you can also use this to uh, split up the signal to multiple displays or projectors if you want to later. So power supply is also in that side compartment. In the front compartment, there are two uh, HDMI, full size HDMI, female, female connectors. You'll need one of these uh, for that bigger tripod. And so one connects to there and the 35 foot uh, full size HDMI, the cable that's going to be used for the main uh, signal length, I suppose you could say, uh, from the camera, from the tripod to the switcher. That's what will go on this end. And on the left side is the user's manuals and then extra feet for the two tripods. And that's it. So these are the two um, 30 foot, uh, 35 foot HDMI cables and so you'll use these um, for the long runs 
Um, at the ends, the the cables aren't protected, so uh, make sure you don't drag them against the ground too much if you're working outside. Um, but they have Velcro, and there's two of them. There are also two six-foot HDMI cables. Um, one is slightly more better built than the other, but um, doesn't matter. This is a smaller one and this is a heavier one but they're both six feet and you can use these for say going from the HDMI switch the where you plug in one and uh, there are two outputs so like for the projector laptop um, to the projector and to the ATEM so the two of these you can use one of these for from that switch. The other one you can use for whatever. I haven't really found a use for them, but these also have Velcro ties and there's two of these. There's also four of these um, extension cables. Um, I'm not sure how long they are. I think maybe like 15 feet. Four of these 15 feet extension cables. Now, this is one of the tripods, this is the smaller one, and I just wanted to show some of the adjustments. Um, so the legs are fairly straightforward, um, it has three of these, the, just lift them up to unlock it and let it slide down and close it. The big one has two. Um, the quick release plate isn't on here because it's on the camera. This locks the pan and this locks the tilt. Um, so going up and down is a little bit more firm, but side to side is pretty uh, slightly more easier to use. Um, this has a crank up mechanism, so you can loosen that using the screw on the side if you want to, and then just screw screw it up like that. And um, to get the camera on, let me grab the camera. You uh, basically tilt it slightly, um, slide it in, and then this unlocking thing on the side will slap into place once you slide it in. So, so once you slide it in, then there's a little pin that once you hit it, yeah, it just snaps into place like that. And then to remove it, you just push it up and it holds it in the unlocked position for you and you can take it out. So, just like that. One other thing I didn't mention earlier, for the camcorders, the power goes right there. Um, and you basically, when these tripods are fully extended, you have to keep the power supply close to the tripod, um, like basically right below it. And then there's also this manual lens cover that opens manually and closes manually. You should close it after you're done. Um, the camera controls, um, you got zoom here. There's no, we weren't planning on recording locally on the camcorders themselves, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, and there's an, if you wanted to do that, there's this SD card slot right here that you can use um, and it automatically turns on when you open it and um, the way I have it set up is if you wanted to have an external mic um, you could plug it into here and then on the ATEM um, on the first row so say you had a mic plugged into here you can set you can monitor it using the headphone that second one and the audio that you send the audio that you send to the ATEM um, if you let me see the audio you can control manually adjust the mic level here so you can see where you want it you generally want it at that 12 mark so it would be for minus 12 and so you can adjust it manually like that but if you're taking audio from the mixer, then you don't need to worry about that. 
and uh, you have to leave the display open when you're using it because of the HDMI connection obviously but this is a smaller tripod and this is where you can use the 90 degree um, HDMI connector right there and that's pretty much it so now I want to discuss a few things this is the the switcher the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini that is specific to the way I have it currently set up and so this is what it'll look like when you first start it up and that's when you plug in the power um, so basically I made another video on this but uh, you have two audio inputs so if you're plugging into a mixer um, they're set to line level so even though it says mic um, if you want to plug in like say like a lavalier mic that you're using then you have to go into HM software control click the the like the gear icon in the lower left I believe and set these inputs to mic level but they're set at line level so how you have this set up probably is two cameras you can use up to four but two cameras, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, um, projector will probably be on 4, that's what I labeled it at least, and the webcam out is for the USB-C uh, cable, and that can go to the laptop. And uh, one thing I didn't mention in the other video was this um, Ethernet jack, RJ45, um, you can plug this into a network and if you have another computer or if you have the main laptop that you're using on the same network you can use ATEM software control over the network and adjust the settings that way. HDMI out is if you want to say you wanted to see the program feed and when I say the program feed that's the main output. This is if you wanted to see the main uh, what you have whatever is selected on the front panel that's what will come out here um, and that also comes out the same webcam output but if you wanted to plug it into another monitor and preview that or attach this in a longer signal chain of switchers or whatever then you can you can plug it there but going back to the front um, the way I have this set up to queue is there's a preview and program so program is red and preview is green and so when it's green that means that's the cue that's coming next and so you use the two transition buttons you got cut and auto cut is immediate so say I switch that means four is on air now four is going to program and one is on preview and then if you press auto then it does whatever transition you have selected over here like mix and then it transitions between the two these are the audio the audio settings up here there's on that will remain on even if the the video isn't queued up or there's audio from video which will only turn on when the video is also turned on queued up and these uh, reset sets, imagine these uh, so imagine these up and down arrows, they control imaginary faders. Um, and so by default, it's at unity. And you can change that with this uh, using the up and down arrows. And reset takes you back to unity. Same with the mic inputs. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that these arrows um, only adjust the the fader so if you're familiar with mixing if uh, the input is distorting or it's still too quiet after you've made adjustments to this um, you would have to go into ATEM software control and adjust the gain on the audio tab a um, couple other things this key even though it says key um, this is referring to an upstream chroma key and so that means if you have a green screen on input 4 then uh, this will uh, it'll have input 4 as like the top layer you can imagine then whatever is green then whatever else you have queued up so say input 1 that will show up as the chrome green 
but if you wanted to set up a different kind of key like a luma key um, so luma key is where you have another layer that you that you uh, another key basically that tells the switcher what is transparent or not what to show through that is not used controlled using this button and the picture in picture here these are set to certain sizes as well and so if you wanted to adjust the size of the picture in picture you would have to go into ATEM software control as well so that pretty much covers I believe what I didn't cover in the previous video about the ATEM switcher um, and how I had it configured and all this is this startup state is saved in ATEM software control so if you wanted to change the startup state then you could clear it and save uh, have it set up how you want it and then save that new state